Coming up this week on the Course of Life podcast, we're looking back on a busy week in sports, Waste Management Open Week, a.k.a. Super Bowl Week. Lots going on to talk about in both golf and football to get to, including the return of Brooks to the winner's circle and Tom Brady freaking did it. We get into that. And speaking of football as well, uh, we featured Noah Hester, who you remember from Terry Bradshaw's family and the Bradshaw Bunch on E! Love that show. Love that family. This week, we have Noah's wife, Lacey Hester, joining us. She's also quite the golfer as well, too. We get into her coaching and basketball and golf and food and family in Hawaii and all that good stuff. And we finish with a prop bet roundup, Super Bowl recap, and our important Valentine's Day plans when we hashtag always end with food. All of it brought to you by our friends at Active Body. And Mike, it's that easy. I talk about it all the time. It's the five to 10 minute workout that I do each day with the Active 5 unit. And now you can do it too alongside. It's a great way to track your progress and e- e- uh, e- easily keep you, you know, right where you need to be uh, with your daily, weekly, and monthly goals to get in better shape. It's a really simple unit that you can take. It's super portable. It goes anywhere with you. Again, it's the Active 5 unit brought to you by Active Body. And our friends are giving us the promo code COL for 20% off your Active 5 unit. So check out Active Body online and use promo code COL. For 20% off of your Active 5 unit today. and welcome to Course of Life, part of the Morning Read Podcast Network. We are proud to be presented by our friends at Desert Fox Golf and Groovit Golf. I'm Michael, he's Alex. And Alex, it was a weekend that brought me back to maybe about five years ago, just with everything going on. I started the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Uh, always a fun time during Super Bowl yes. week because we had the return of... Brooks Kepka, we had Steve Stricker toward the top of the leaderboard. We did. We had, yes. we had Jordan Spieth in the conversation all week. After what did I say last week? You did. You <laughs> hinted at the thought of like throwing a dollar on Jordan Spieth, and I joked yeah. his odds would be around like eighty or ninety to one, and we 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 shooed that away. Nonetheless, yeah. he found himself in contention as well. He's always just such a lightning rod when he gets into tournaments. True. I feel like he's just, he's on, he's the, on that list of maybe five or ten guys where if he's in it, it just kind of it, it ramps up and doubles the excitement. Yeah, it, it was it was an exciting weekend, no matter what, especially with the drivable 17th, a lot of low scores, a lot of birdies. Let's start at the top with Brooks Kepka because he took advantage of 17 on Sunday for his finishing 65 to take this tournament at 19 under, had an eagle there on 17. That that was huge for him. Yeah, he said after that he just, he kind of really revels in the finish on this course. And I know it because I've been there and I know you've seen it many times on TV. It's, you know, 15 is a par five you can get to in two. 16, obviously the stadium par three where you can make a lot of noise with the birdie, the drivable 17th, and then a short par four and 18. So, you know, he said you can go five, six under par on like the last five or six holes here and he did just that and his sunday finish finishing with a charge taking advantage uh, of the short holes and an unbelievable eagle chip on 17 he, he showed that he, he's got the stones they're back i don't know how back he is on the back scale but he certainly he's certainly feeling dangerous right now he's given off the the old school uh, of two three years ago kind of cocky brooks kepka swagger vibes right now it was a it was an interesting win to see on super bowl sunday to say the least yeah and he of course went nice and low and xander shoffley who maybe was more favorited i feel like coming into sunday to really pull this out just couldn't get it done two bogeys on the back nine yeah. which did not help at all um let's talk jordan spieth are we disappointed yes. that he went two over on Sunday or are we just surprised that he didn't completely blow up having a position to win again? 
Yeah, it does feel like more of the latter, honestly, yeah. because like we're, I've, I've just been dying to see him resurrect himself back on some leaderboards. This finish was a, t- a T4 tie for fourth place in his best leaderboard in a couple of years now. Still, it's been four years, Mike. The last time he won, I believe, was that 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 British Open, the Open Championship mm-hmm. game where yep. he was walking the putts in. That was the last time he won. It's been that long for Jordan Spieth. He has really fallen through the cave and trying to resurrect his swing in his game. It, it was good to see him back with that Saturday was at 61, 10 under par, bogey free, rolling in putts left and right. You're right. A L- little bit of a letdown, but it wasn't a complete meltdown on Sunday. Yeah. So I think there are some good takeaways from him. Before we get into how our best picks of the weekend did, spoiler, they didn't win. Uh, who do you think has a better yeah. chance of winning a major this year? Jordan Spieth or Brooks Kepka? It's gonna have to go with Brooks Kepka. The, yeah. though, though I wish the answer was Jordan Spieth. Mm-hmm. I wish it was. I think the answer is Brooks Kepka just because we see him big game hunt so often. And like I think almost half of his tour wins are majors. It was yes. almost surprising <laughs> to see him just win a normal little Phoenix Open. You know, he just oh he mm-hmm. he'll actually win these tournaments too. Uh, it's good to see. So I think the answer to that would be Brooks, but it's it's fun to play around with, especially, Mike, since we are two months away from Augusta, to play around with the idea of Jordan Spieth coming into form for, for the Masters and potentially making a run there. Uh, that, that only brings more excitement to golf fans springtime. Let's talk about our best picks of the weekend and how they did. You had Scotty Scheffler, who was flirting with it, finished 16 under tied yeah. for seventh. UT guy came up a few short, just lingering. Yeah, and your yeah, your guy was Ron, John Rom was your yep. closest guy. Whip Simpson not a great week. Missed no. cut for Sebastian Munoz. A lot of my picks really fell by the wayside, but yeah, Scheffler grinding close to the lead within one or two shots at a couple points, but just couldn't make the putts when he needed to. So we we go another week begging without the W. Yeah, let's uh, go across the pond, really across the pond and then some probably. Let's talk about the oil grab in Saudi Arabia, which attracted the likes of Phil, Tony Finau and DJ. <laughs> um, also, we need we need to mention, too, that I think the Marshalls stole the weekend at the uh, at, at the Waste Management Phoenix. We had a Marshalls hand in frame showing that the ball was swimming with the oh fishes. Yeah. And uh, DJ, of course, just total laser beam onto a Marshall as well out there in Saudi Arabia. Uh, the difference is DJ won. So good call out. Yeah. That Marshall at Waste Management, Mike, he was like doing the swimming motion you would do if you're like in a game of like Pictionary or charades or something like that. Like that's what that, that motion looked like. It was very funny. But yeah, DJ basically killed a man in Saudi Arabia. The, the man did not actually die. So everyone can no. calm down with there. But you need to watch the video on our Instagram at COL Podcast. He hit a drive that absolutely sniped a Marshall. I, I think it hit him in his shoulder because it did not hit him in his head because he got up shortly afterwards. Yeah. But somewhere in, that somewhere was in his bullet back. of all bullets. Mike, you know me as a marshal at the match play. I, I need to be ready for this in about seven or eight weeks. So I'm going to have a head on a swivel every time DJ is driving at Austin Country Club. I got, I got to watch out for myself. There. Yeah, you, you got to maybe, you know, wear some football pads. Something. <laughs> it's, been, it's always been my dream to get sniped by a Tiger Woods drive. So then he could come over, you know, pat me on the shoulder, sign a golf ball and hand it to me. Like I've, 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 I've been on record and saying I'm willing to take that hit anywhere but my head. I'm willing to take the hit pretty much anywhere. So uh, we'll see if that comes to fruition. But nonetheless, check out our Instagram for, for DJ almost killing a man. It was, it was quite a snipe. Indeed. And he, and he got the win in Saudi Arabia as well, in addition to just you know the, the, the pocket change for, for heading over there at the oil money grab. Let's talk about this coming weekend. It is the Pebble Beach AT&T Pro-Am without the celebrities. Mm, yeah, yeah, a little luster worn off there, huh? Yeah, Not quite the same bite. But, um, but it's going to have a full field, which you would expect at Pebble Beach. Dustin Johnson going all the way around the world to come back to play this weekend. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to say it right now. Just don't put any money on him. I just don't. I don't think you can win there and then come all the way across the world and win again. I think that's too much. 
Oh, but he's won. Uh, he's won there too. He likes the course. I know. Isn't that know. crazy? Just, this is that. The, I don't. I actually do wonder if he flew commercial. If he, if he flew private. If he flew private from Saudi Arabia to Pebble Beach, that's like the ultimate flex. That that's the most expensive private flight I could possibly imagine. You would think he was on a commercial flight, but I don't know, man. You know, when when you're playing the way DJ is the last few years, and you take a look at the person on the PGA Tour, he he very well may have had his own plane, Mike. He he could have been on on the on the tarmac. 20 minutes after the, the last putt dropped in Saudi Arabia heading back here. So you never know how well he could, he could travel across the pond. It's very likely other names in the, in the field. Uh, Phil <laughs> also making the trek all the way back. I'm pretty sure he was in a private jet. Uh, Cantley yes. burger Spieth. I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to say it right now. I will put money on Jordan Spieth this week. I just, it just okay, feels so like we'll get those odds up. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> so, yeah, I like the confidence in Jordan. Um, looking at him, I'm looking at Daniel Berker as well, too, who I picked last week at, at the Waste Management Phoenix Open, had a decent showing. This could be the week. Maybe he gets over the top. He's had some good success here in recent years. Uh, again, picks will be on Twitter. So I'm at Course of Life One on Twitter, and you're at MWRINC. Wednesday afternoon, we'll have our card up for the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro. We, we just call it the Pro. There's, there's no AM yeah, this year. So no it's, it's just the Pro. So we'll see you there, Pebble. Great views as always on the water. Definitely always. one of the nicest kind of like spectator weekends. I love the shot, Mike, and you'll know this. They do the blimp overhead shot of the like beach by the 18th hole at Pebble mm-hmm. Beach there. And there's like people just walking their dogs, just letting their dogs run free on the beach, just chasing after rocks and birds. And it's just, it's a pleasant sight for the eyes. On a Sunday. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. This is why we play golf it's for not- the scenery. And yeah, pretty well, pretty much. I mean, if you've yeah. seen our golf games, you understand why we why we enjoy as much of the scenery as we can. Too. I don't play to put the ball in the hole because that sometimes doesn't happen. But I play for the scenery, play to get out. In <laughs> it's nature, all about the photos, right? To commune <laughs> with the world. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking um, of, of communing with the world, we we tune into things outside of sports. We're not just mm-hmm. golfers. We're not just viewers of sports. We watch everything under the sun. Uh, so let's get into this week's tuned in. Uh, I'm curious what you got on your list this week coming off of the end of the uh, football season. So I am still an episode behind, but I am now into WandaVision. Uh, I'm about four episodes in. I've not seen episode five. I know episode five is supposed to be gargantuanly huge. Maybe by the time the episode comes out, actually probably not. I don't know my schedule. I'm not going to see it yet. Uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty messed up. But it's pretty good. Uh, so it's a little complicated um, without giving anything away. Uh, Wanda and Vision are become characters in some 50s, 60s and 70s sitcoms. Wow, they're two separate entities. I would not have guessed that. Interesting. So, Wanda and Vision. Okay. Wanda and Vision. They are two, yeah, two separate. Want, there's one. Haven't you seen the, the Marvel movies? Haven't you seen the Avengers? Well, not the Avengers. They're not in the Avengers. Well, there are no. a couple of the Avengers. Uh, uh, this, is why, this is why we tune ourselves in. This, this is why we tune ourselves in. This, so you can tell me everything that I need to be watching because I'm, I'm, I, I don't, don't watch anything. I don't have enough time to tell you everything. So you're just going to have to go spend a weekend binging all the Marvel movies. Good stuff. My tuned in <laughs> this week is a new show on NBC, uh, starring a guy that's been on TV for a long time now. I, I was doing the, the Wikipedia search. I was like, dang, Ted Danson is going on like three or four yep. decades Cheers. on television. You originally Cheers. know him as Sam Malone from Cheers, where everybody yep. knows your name. Shout out Boston, Massachusetts. He was then on Becker for a while yep. as well, too. Great 90s show as well, too. He's had a couple other stints. He was on The Good Place the as good well. Place, which nice I'm still show. finishing. I still have a couple episodes left of that one. So Great show. Yeah. And now he's on his newest project, NBC sitcom, called Mr. Mayor. It's a really good concept. He just kind of uh, poses the every everyday father um, raising a daughter as well, too, and being mayor of Los Angeles. So he gets himself in a lot of interesting predicaments. You know, as the mayor you're not quite the like polished like higher high high scale politician where you're going to these heavy duty meetings mayors do lots of really goofy stuff on the job day to day and and we kind of highlight that life of being a politician day to day it's got him bobby moynihan from snl a long time ago as well in the cast and it's a funny watch so i highly suggest mr mayor on nbc Let's uh, turn over to this week's guest, Alex. I know you love watching the Bradshaw Bunch on E! featuring all of Terry Bradshaw's family. You love him so much. You love that show so much that you got Chef Noah Hester from the show 
on this podcast. And now you get to have a conversation with his better half, his wife, Lacey Hester. Right. Who isn't she like the true golfer in the in that pair? Right. I think so. Yeah. Don't say that too loud for Noah. I'm curious. Okay. Actually, I didn't really ask about the, what their competition level is, but Lacey plays a lot of golf. Yeah. I, I st- when I started following the family and watching the show, I realized that not only do Lacey and Noah live the most amazing existence in Hawaii with their kids as well, too. We just we can't get over how beautiful their views are, but she plays a lot of golf, has a really fun crew. She talks about golf, coaching basketball, family Bradshaw's funny moments with Terry and a very interesting story about a football player. We might, we might talk a little bit about later on the podcast as well, too. So good Ooh. chat here with Lacey. Ooh, we will hear all of that in just a moment. But first, as always, we want to let you know this conversation is brought to you by our good friends over at Groovit Golf, makers of the Groovit Golf Brush. It's the year when you need to make sure you're hitting clean shots, Alex, and that means you need clean grooves. And the Groove It brush makes it so easy. So easy. It's got a built-in pump inside the brush that sprays water or cleaning solution right on the club face. Makes it quick and efficient wherever you are out on the course. Plus, instead of it being stuck to your bag, it has a detachable magnet, so you bring the brush to the club instead of the club to the brush. And on top of all this, it's got a three-year bristle guarantee. If you can wear out the brush head cleaning golf clubs in three years, send it back and Groove It will get you a free replacement. Now that is reliability. So prepare to be amazed with the consistency and control the clean grooves will give you. Using your existing clubs with the Groove It, you'll get the spin, trajectory, and consistency you're looking for. So head on over to GrooveItBrush.com and get your Groove It brush today. Next up on the tee from Paradise, a.k.a. Hawaii, by way of a family that we've all grown to love on the course of life here, the Bradshaw Bunch in Texas. She's a mother, a wife who's also quite the athlete and a golfer by hobby as well. It's Lacey Hester joining the course of life. Lacey, how's everything going today? Hey, everything is great. Another day in paradise. Absolutely. Yeah, I am so jealous of where you are now. Set, set the scene for everyone. I know you and I were talking about some Hawaii golf that was happening in the month of January, before we hopped on, but where, where are you located in, in Hawaii? Um, I'm up on the mountain in Waimea. It's kind of, they call it cold country. So it's a little chilly here. Um, I don't know, probably 70, which is like freezing for us. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> ja- ja- jackets out for 70 degrees, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. So I'm, I'm curious, um, you know, obviously you guys got out there from Texas to Hawaii, you made the move out there and whatnot. Um, tell me about kind of your earliest memories uh, with the Bradshaw Bunch when it all started. You're, you're the first things kind of you remember uh, at, with Tammy and Terry growing up as a kid and where that took place. Okay. Um, we were in Texas. We grew you know, we all grew up in Texas. Um, and they started dating when I was in middle school. And um, I remember like thinking it was super cool. And nobody, a lot of people around us didn't, like my age kids had no idea who he was, but I thought it was cool. Right. I loved the bumps. I was like, oh yeah, I know that. Um, and yeah, he used to make fun of me all the time because I played sports and would wear like basketball shorts around and like big tennis shoes. And he'd be like, why? You look sloppy. You look sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was such a tomboy. <laughs> That's funny. Um, were you so you were a big athlete as a kid? What what were your um, what were your sports that you liked to play the most when you were a kid? Yeah, I played basketball and volleyball, um, and I played those in college also. So just basically, since I was like five, I've been playing basketball, uh, and then I did some track. Like I was supposed to go with Terry to an uh, interview with Tom Brady, <sighs> but. I couldn't go because I had a track meet and he'll never let me live that one down. He's like, you missed that for a track meet? Oh man, do you remember what but what year that was or how long ago that was? Yeah, that was in 2005. Oh, wow. Right. Right after the first three Super Bowls, too. Yeah. 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 Myself being a lifelong Patriots fan, extremely jealous and I'm borderline pissed that you missed out on that opportunity. Sorry about that one. That's what everyone said. What are you thinking? I didn't think I want a medal at that track meeting. Nice. And so basketball, what was your position growing up? Uh, A small forward and that's pretty much it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I saw you got, you recently got the opportunity to even do some coaching as well too. I did as well. I played a little high school basketball and like post college, I got to like reunite that love for the game and coach some kids like at the YMCA level. But tell me about the team that, that you coached and what that experience is like for you. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I coached the girls varsity team here at high school. Um, I've been with the, I've been the head coach for the last, this will be my third year as head coach. Uh, before that, I was the assistant and JV coach. So six years total now coaching at this high school. They're just a really good group of girls. There's not a lot of youth sports here. So a lot of my kids pick up a basketball for the first time as freshmen. <laughs> so it's a big learning curve there. Um, but, you know, the last two years we've been very successful. We won our island the first year I was coach and then got second place last year. And then we're hoping to do something good this year as well. That sounds so much cooler when you say you won your island instead of, instead of <laughs> saying like you won your county or you won your league. It just, it just sounds a lot better. <laughs> it's got a nice ring to it. That's cool. Love the basketball background. So do you have a specific like pro or college teams that you root for? It says in your bio on Instagram, Lacey Hester, that you're a basketball fanatic. Who are your teams that you like? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm more of a player, individual person. I really like, well, you're going to laugh at me. Don't laugh at me. You can laugh. Uh, Utah Jazz is my favorite team to watch play, to be honest. Nice. Love that. So are we talking like current Donovan Mitchell or are we like going back to like Stockton and Malone days when you were a kid? Yeah, I mean, you got to love the greats, Stockton and Malone days. But, you know, I really like them because they've always been a, a fundamental team, um, even when they had the greats on the team. But then they went through their years of not really having any superstars but they still could win games because they played as a team whereas you know there's a lot of like the the nets now they have their super team and the golden state had their super team and that was more just individual players just being really good but the jazz has always relied on a team yeah and i think you're seeing a little resurgence of that with the jazz in the last few years too so that, that's yeah, something yeah. to be excited about there uh-huh. Nice. Love that. So uh, basketball was obviously a big part of your childhood. I'm curious, growing up as a kid, did you play a lot of golf? Do you remember first picking up the golf club as a kid or when did that first hit you? You know what's funny is I didn't start playing golf until I moved here like five years ago. Wow. Okay. And, and I was terrible. <laughs> that was the most frustrating sport I've ever tried to play. But now I love it and play it as much as I can. Yeah, and obviously you're an amazing spot. Uh, the photos that you post on Instagram have me jealous uh, on a regular basis against Lacey underscore Hester underscore on IG if you want to check out her golfing uh, expeditions as well, too. I'm curious uh, what maybe golf meant to you, especially like in the past year. You know, for a lot of people, I, I've been playing it my entire life, but I kind of had a, a newfound love for it when I realized it was one of the only things I could go outside and like do safely for, for a certain time period. What is what is kind of golf meant to you like especially in this past year oh my gosh so much i can't go to the gym you know i can't play basketball can't play volleyball so fi- thank goodness i have this competitive thing that i can still do and as a, we do it as a family which is really fun so when we were in texas we went out and did like you know golf trips we went to florida and played concessions like every day for a month and then you know when they come out here my parents we play every day out here and it's just really great to still have that and be able to do it safely during the pandemic. Uh, and we're not, you know, we're not stuck in the house because we have that outlet, which has been really awesome. Yeah, it's just been so refreshing on so many levels. Agree with you there. Let, let's talk about your uh, golfing crew as well, too. I know you mentioned you play with the family and I've seen you. Ha- y'all have tons of fun out there on the course, like way, way more than the average group does. I'm curious, is it always a party scene like that or, or is that just kind of like once in a while? No, no. Every time. Always a party. <laughs> Um, I, I've actually gotten really lucky and found this really awesome group of girls to play with who are all, not only are they like hilarious and super fun, but they're all badass golfers. So, you know, we can go out there and, and be competitive or we can go out there and just play around. And it's really, it's really fun. And lots of um, little airplane bottles are involved. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. It's it's always a nice skill when you can just rip a drink or a shot and then rip a drive right afterwards and make it look real professional. There's there's something to be said about that skill. And the one thing that I, I have to comment on is the music that you guys get going on the golf course. First, I want to ask you, what are your what's your favorite type of music that you like to play on the course? Because I've seen a lot of variety from your crew. Yeah, we definitely have a variety. We do a lot of um, a lot of like fun country, a lot of um, like old all 
alternative, like 90s alternative, 90s hip hop, and then, you know, the great hair bands, 80s metal. Just anything we can do loud, really, which is probably the opposite of what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> it's okay. You got some real estate out there in Hawaii. It's a little bit different space wise with what you can do uh, <laughs> in terms of the noisy output on the golf course. I saw a Backstreet Boys sing along at one point. Are, are you more Backstreet Boys or NSYNC girl? You know, I actually didn't listen to either as a child. I had an older brother who would shun me if I did that. So I was <laughs> like sublime and stuff. He would make fun of me. But now, I don't know, maybe. I actually couldn't tell you. I don't know any of their songs. I probably don't know the difference. That's great. The, the one other music thing that you posted that I got a kick out of is you were going down memory lane with some pop punk music from like the early 2000s as well, too. I, that yeah. definitely resonated with me. So I appreciated seeing that that was on your playlist recently, too. Yeah, I had to like flip my bangs a couple times, you know, and relive the lip piercing days and black hair. <laughs> it's so awesome. I told you myself and my wife, we still get to go see bands like Good Charlotte and like Simple Plan are still playing shows now. It's it's a big time throwback vibe if you get the opportunity to do it. That's awesome. I totally would. Yeah. A lot of good memory. <laughs> Love it. Again, it's Lacey Hester we're talking with. She's part of the Bradshaw Bunch. They're on the E Network. Uh, season one's in the books. And I know that season two sounds like officially a green light from everything I've heard. Kind of what have you heard and what's the time? timeline looking like for like filming are there any plans have we talked about anything for for season two of the Bradshaw Bunch yet yeah so season two is a go for sure we start filming in March um they're gonna actually hopefully film the first couple weeks out here so maybe get some golf on there nice uh and then we go back to Texas and film you know in that location because that's where everybody else lives so we'll pack up and move there for a few months very cool. I was going to ask if there was some some Hawaii on there, and I'm, I'm glad there. I'm glad the crew is going to make the trip out there. I'm sure they're really dreading making the trip out there to, to film you guys. Yeah, but be terrible, terrible. Yeah. I think they're going to manage. So I'm looking forward forward to seeing that. It's yourself and your family. We had your husband, Chef Noah Hester, on a couple months back, and he's an awesome follow as well. One of those accounts where if you follow, you better have just eaten because he's going to make you very hungry. Now you have the privilege of of getting to all this food that. We we just see on, on Instagram. My first question is, how do you contain yourself with, with everything that he makes, either at his restaurant or at home? Well, so the thing is, is that I also just drool over it through Instagram because he's not cooking. <laughs> oh, uh, no. He, well, he, you know, he, wor- he works a lot. And so when he's here, he just wants the simple things like a frozen burrito and a frozen pizza. <laughs> Which I can provide, which is I feel good about. But when he does cook, like if we have company and stuff, man, it's the best nights. I eat all of it, everything. That's great. What what's a what's a great uh, let's see. We we talked a lot of fish and seafood with him specifically, and he talked about the intricacies of of the, all the different types of fishes that he gets himself. What's a good like maybe fish or seafood dish or something that he's made recently? Yeah, he makes a really great like bouillabaisse, like seafood soup or chipino. Um, I always crave that. That's so delicious. It has a bunch of everything like um, mussels and clams and pieces of white fish and shrimp, all the good stuff in it. Yes. Um, kind of a tomato based soup. That's one of my favorites. He also just does like amazing barbecue. I'm craving his brisket all the time. Yes, me myself being from Austin, Texas, I can speak to being a brisket super fan. So that's always a good thing to have around as someone with a smoker who can make meat like that. Uh, one thing, one other thing he brought up in our conversation, which I got to ask about, is he t- he introduced me to something I'd never heard of, which was musubi, uh, a, a gas station snack. He said it was spam and rice with a little seaweed wrapper. Are, are you all in on, on the musubi bandwagon, or are you against it? No, no, I'm all in. I'm not a fan of the seaweed wrapper, so I have to take that off because I feel like it smells like the ocean. So that's weird, and I shouldn't go with spam and rice, but I'm all about spam and rice. We love spam out here. Love that. So you can just pick up, they just have pieces of that in the gas station. You can, How much are those? Like, whoa, a couple of bucks a piece like or what? 99 cents or something. Like, super cheap. I love that. That's so cool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so, Lacey, it's yourself. It's Noah that everyone can look forward to seeing more of on the Bradshaw Bunch. And, of course, the little ones as well. We got to get to. Well, let's first check in on, on Zuri. Uh, definitely myself and my wife's favorite member of the family to follow. She has the personality. Well, she had the mind of a 19-year-old when I talked to Noah couple months ago so maybe she's in her 20s now mentally but how's Zuri doing and what's maybe the craziest thing she said recently to you um 
she is great always. She's always a hoot. So funny. I never know what's going to come out of her mouth, which is, you know, good and bad. I'll take her places. I'm like, just don't say anything crazy. Don't admit, you know, don't make me look bad. <laughs> um, not that she would make me look bad, but sometimes she tells my secrets. Yes. To people. I'm like, oh no. Um, let's see. We, what's the craziest thing she said recently? Um, She's just always got something funny to say. She's she's loving YouTube right now, and she is so mad at me because I won't let her have a TikTok. So that's our argument right now. She wants a TikTok. Uh, um, I don't think she pulled enough for it yet, but she probably have a good one. I don't know. Yes, she probably would be very entertaining. The, the, the thing, thing about Zuri is she just delivers those lines that have you like head turning with your reaction. So I, I think maybe we should just like stick a GoPro on her maybe just so I can see everyone's reactions to the things that she says in season two when you film. So you can you can pass that to the production crew because I know that would be good content. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and the Tom Brady comment was that, that was really good. That was hilarious. <laughs> nice. And um, in terms of uh, Jebediah, I know I saw that he had some PGA swag in an outfit that you put on him recently. Uh, has he swung a club yet? Does he have any affinity for the game of golf at all, or what's his path to being a professional golfer here? Yeah, I think Zuri might be the one. She wants to play. Which oh is yeah, great. nice. So maybe her game. Um, he, he doesn't really care right now. He's <laughs> like a hockey puck, hockey stick. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Love that. Awesome. So again, it's Lacey, Noah, and Zura, Zuri and Jebediah. You'll see them all part of the Bradshaw Bunch on E! starting filming in March, which is exciting. Is there any timeline for when the season two airs? Or are we just going to stay tuned to your socials and see officially when that's going to be? Yeah, stay tuned. So we're hoping late summer, maybe early fall. Um, but yeah, stay tuned. It could all change. We, the world is so crazy right now. It is, yeah. I'm glad to have you guys back on the screen, though. Very refreshing family show to watch uh, for people of all ages. Let's get to some quick shots now with you, Lacey, and just go through some other topics I wanted to touch on. Uh, A funny theme that had emerged like in the last few months within your family is Rachel. Uh, Season one, we were trying to find her a date and things didn't quite uh, work out there. I heard some murmurs that there might be some sort of a campaign to maybe get her uh, in like the Bachelor Bachelorette franchise. How's everything going with her and is that campaign still alive or are we done with that yeah i i think she should be the bachelorette is that right if it's a girl yeah bachelorette. she should yeah, i think she should do it i think that'd be fun but um i think she's off the market right now spoiler alert so we'll see how that goes <laughs> nice. And then I got to ask about uh, you and your background, your love for horses as well, too. Um, tell me a little bit about the background you have. I've seen lots of photos from you at horse shows. Um, what, what's your background there? And maybe what would talk to me about like your favorite personality trait uh, that you love about being around horses? Okay. Well, I do have to be honest with you. Zuri loves horses. I have, I'm scared of them. They're very scary to me. (laughs) Um, So we do the horses. My parents breed horses. um, And so they have like 250 horses on their ranch. Wow. And Zuri does the showing. So she does halter. And so that's basically as close as I get to a horse. I feel like they can smell my fear and they don't like it either. I see that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, so I love that she loves it. She's obsessed. She can tell you every breed of horse, every color variety of horse. She can tell you like how old it is and she's amazing. That's awesome. Really cool to see that she's adopted that passion. Very neat. And then I got to ask, in terms of golf wise, before we get to our 19th hole question, uh, what are you enjoying about your golf game right now? Is there like a favorite club or or a favorite shot you've been hitting a lot of really well recently? Well, what's working for you golf wise as we head into 2021? Well, my seven iron is my favorite. Sometimes I'll use that even if I shouldn't be using that. I'm like, I'll hit this twice instead of hitting a wood. Yeah. Um, and I just got a new driver, PXG driver. It's amazing. Really love it. I even got it tuned for my weird swing. So I've been having a good time off the tee box with that. Nice. PXG, you're not messing around, I see. I'm not. I've, I've decided to take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Serious to the commitment. Uh, and the 19th whole question, like I mentioned, we love to wrap every interview with this. When you get done with 18 on the island, you head into the clubhouse, you got the beautiful sun setting over the big island. Uh, what is like your go to? or your favorite 19th hole meal and drink that you like to order after playing? I like a red beer, so Coors Light with uh, like a shot of Bloody Mary mix and hot wings. Nice. A lot of spice there. I appreciate that. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's, you know, it's hot. you got to cool off with a beer and then eat your wings. Definitely. Wings and beer, tried and true combo there. Hey, Lacey, thank you so much for joining us here in the course of life. We'll keep tabs and keep updated on your socials as we get closer to seeing season two of the Bradshaw Bunch on E! Network. And uh, keep hitting them straight out there. Great. Thanks so much for having me. That interview with Lacey Hester is brought to you by our friends at Desert Fox Golf, the makers of the Phone Caddy. The Phone Caddy is a -a one-of-a-kind fold holder for golfers designed to mount right onto the golf cart. The Phone Caddy works seamlessly with almost any phone model, and it Velcros onto the cart in seconds. Give your yardage and scoring apps at your fingertips, change music, answer calls and texts, and more all with the Phone Caddy. It's the most functional way to keep your phone safe and ready on the course at all times. And right now for our listeners, you can save 10% off your purchase with the promo code course of life. That's 10% off your phone caddy, including their patriotic line of phone caddies with the promo code course of life. So head on over to their website, desertfoxgolf.com. Use promo code course of life to save 10% and get your phone caddy today. And we're back. Great interview there with Lacey Hester. Alex, I know you are super excited for season two. Get to see all of them in Hawaii. That's just that's just a great place to go play golf. It's yeah, I, f- I really feel for that production crew who's like, oh, yeah. man, well, you know, we, we were filming all in Texas season one. I guess we got to go out and film in Hawaii, you know, and it only yeah, seems right. right, you know, makes sense. So it's, it's a tough life. It's a it tough is, life. Yeah, so we'll hopefully get some golf course shots out there as well with Lacey and the family playing on the course. Looking forward to uh, season two of the Bradshaw Bunch, definitely. Yeah. And if you liked that interview with Lacey, plus everything else we do, and you want to maybe make it possible for us to go to Hawaii, because that would be pretty awesome. Go ahead and rate us and subscribe on the podcast app of your choice. Let us know how great of a job we're doing or tell us all the things we're doing wrong. And, uh, you know, get all that pent up frustration out of you and uh, we'll we'll forgive you. It's okay. We understand. We're here for you. Thank you. Appreciate that message, Mike. Yeah. Very kind. Um, also, can we just circle back for a moment, Alex, on how Lacey missed an opportunity to meet seven-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady? Yes, for, for a gymnastics meet as a kid. It was at 2005, she said. So that was right after the first three rings. Like, mm. you know, that three-ring career there, right at the beginning, that that first Tom Brady career, yeah. that was yep. a Hall of Fame career in and of itself. He is, He's now compiled a separate Hall of Fame career, like, just yeah. individually, like past age 35. It, yeah. it, this, is, this is an unbelievable world we're living in. He has won more Super Bowls than any other team. Not player, team. <laughs> <laughs> Including the team he played for. It's just like... He's the- also... He's, <laughs> he's the only quarterback to win a Super Bowl played in his home stadium. Right? That's cool. Uh, and... He's the only Super Bowl. He's the only he's the only quarterback to have teammates wear black and white on the field. Oh, yeah. You liked a few of those calls the the other night. (laughs) Yes, you did. (laughs) Yeah, those didn't hurt either. It's always nice to have the refs on your side. And we know TB12 is always very friendly with them. He's been very friendly for a long time. I know that for a fact. Uh, it was super bittersweet, to be honest. You know, I remember saying last week here that, you know, I'm absolutely rooting for Brady to keep the legacy going, get ring number seven, do it. And I felt that way during the entire game. The difference was, Mike, I wasn't finding myself like having the actual positive, excited reactions when I was watching these Buccaneer scores. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was bittersweet. Melancholy is really the only word. It's like, it was beautiful to see. He's the goat. He's our goat. But to watch him just so seamlessly roll down to Tampa Bay and take a previously joked upon franchise this quickly to a Super Bowl championship makes him just the goat of goats. Undisputed. I, it was I, I mean, his performance in that first half was just so it was textbook, right? It was 80 percent completions from the field, three touchdowns. 
two of them to Gronk. They, they, we forget that he came out of retirement for this. <laughs> this is just, I mean, it, <laughs> I the, mean, it was just... No, I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, part of my language. This is just a nut kick left and right during this entire game for Patriots fans. <laughs> not only was it putting the icing on the cake and winning the Super Bowl for Tampa Bay, Champa Bay, whatever name you want to put on it, but it was like, no, not only, not only am I going to go win it, like dear Bill Belichick. He, he's basically just penning his revenge list and just checking everything off one at a time. Hey, Bill, not only am I going to go win it in Tampa Bay, I'm actually going to throw a, a, a touchdown pass to Gronk, who, who I brought back out of retirement because he hated playing for you, Bill. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do it once. I'm going to do it twice in the Super Bowl. And oh, mm. oh yeah, remember Antonio Brown? Remember how you oh, had yeah, yeah. a week and a half and couldn't stand him and need to get him off your roster? I'm going to resurrect him, make him look like a decent human being. I'm going to get him a Super Bowl touchdown too. And we're all just going to celebrate with our rings in the field afterwards. I, I can't imagine, Mike, I would have paid good money to have a camera on Bill Belichick Sunday <laughs> night watching that Super Bowl. I can't imagine the emotions you know, of watching that. I picture Bill Belichick in his one heavy green winter coat with mittens on, sitting in his chair, just like Bernie Sanders, just looking unhappy through the entire game. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Legs crossed, just very just kerfuffled and uh, extremely annoyed the entire yeah. circumstance of what they have to watch. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it Brady was, it Bill was, update, Mike, is, uh, that was my final note here is the Brady versus Bill update. <laughs> the, the Brady versus Bill update is, hey, Bill, you gotta, you gotta get your ass out of that chair right now and start moving in free agency in the draft because you got some business to take care of now. You are back on the hot seat because Brady proved that he can do it without you and do it easily. Very yep. shocking. Yep. You know, I just think of that line from uh, Star Wars. When, when I left you, I was a student, but now I am the master. He really is, Mike. Yeah. He really is the master. Let's talk about everything else that surrounded this crazy Super Bowl. We talked about prop bets and everything surrounding the game. Uh, first, let's get your thoughts on the halftime show. I know you're mm. kind of are you you're fairly kind of indifferent on the weekend's music. Where do you stand with him, and what do you think of the show? Uh, you know, I am a big fan of the song that I told you would be last. And it you was that correct. Yep. You did nail right blinding there. lights last. I picked it first stubbornly and I was incorrect. Yeah. Yep. Um, I thought it was a very interesting halftime show. I thought it was well done. I thought it was simplistic. I thought it was nice to see a show in which no one took their shirt off. Um, <laughs> and the, the scene, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of weird reaction going on to the whole piece that he did in the, in the mirror hallway and just everything from a, from a production, from a standpoint of someone who's looking at it from production value, that was pretty incredible. That was not something you see in the Super Bowl. So I thought that was that was really cool. I thought the show in general was really well done. They made a big hoopla about how the weekend personally spilt over a bunch of his own money to go into the production of this halftime show. And it did show from a production standpoint. I was very mm -hmm. impressed with what he was able to do, kind of considering the regulations at play and how, you know, he maybe couldn't have an army of dancers kind of next to him. They were there on parts of the stage during the show, but he got through his um, his repertoire of hits very nicely. It reminded you he's got a good solid catalog. I enjoyed the show. It seemed to be very polarizing on the internet. I don't know why it was very polarizing. I uh, thought it was know, very down the middle show. There, 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 there was nothing crazy about it either way, but I, I enjoyed myself. Yeah, just, just a reminder to everyone, you spell his name with only two E's. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's right. um, let's get into commercials too real quick because yes. uh, Thoughts, there were some good ones in there lows. What, what did you like uh, my favorites were the Four Seasons Total Landscaping commercial for Fiverr. <laughs> yes, I know, I know you love to dig at that campaign anytime yeah. you can see one. Shout out yes. to Fiverr. That, that's like the kind of like the Aaron service app or whatever, right? The marketplace. Yeah, so, uh, something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the Rocket Mortgage one with Tracy Morgan was also the two with him were actually really good. The like, are you pretty sure or are you really sure? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that one was pretty good. Agree. Yep. Um, I also want to talk about that Bruce Springsteen ad for Jeep. Yeah, this one, I, you, yeah, you, one? you know what, you I, I saw this i remember i you refreshed me because i was like i don't yeah. remember seeing this at all i don't remember this at all which I'm like, like honestly i was so tuned out and i may have had a couple too many in me mike i don't even remember you seeing that be bruce bruce springsteen i didn't even make that connection last night it was him so yeah. tell, tell me break that commercial down for me like what exactly happened in those two minutes anyway 
So it's a, it's a Jeep commercial, first of all. And uh, basically in it, you have Bruce Springsteen monologuing about um, the middle of America and needing to bring America back together and this need for unity. Oh, and, you know, it's, it's an inspiring message to a certain yeah. extent. And it's all being done. It's all filmed at the the geographical center of the continental United States of the lower okay. 48 uh, and where there happens to be a church. And the episode, the, the, the commercial has a lot of shots of the church and crosses and uh, white man's Bruce Springsteen. And I'm watching this. And as a as a as someone who was brought up Jewish. I'm honestly deeply insulted by this ad. Let we feel that the only way to, as they dubbed it, re have a reunited States of America, which I thought was also insulting, um, is that we only have white Christian men. Yeah. And that's <laughs> like this country is made up of people of different you know, races, religions and creeds. You need to show them all. And also, I have no room for hate in my United States. People that hate me for what I am, I don't want here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and say that. The direction is interesting with how they leaned on that church. You're right. And I didn't even think twice about that church as a structure mm-hmm. or anything like that. But also, like, just the timing uh, of the, of this, like, Jeep putting a commercial like this on Super Bowl Sunday. Like, do, do we, like, I understand where the country is right now, but do we really need to be told this, like, in the third quarter of Super Bowl Sunday? Like, when we're all trying to distract ourselves for a few hours and watch a football game? Like, I just... I, I understand what they were going for, but again, the direction failed. Yeah, and then the timing of the message was just off. So I'm just like, no, I, I yeah. just, just didn't need it. Is my bottom line on that? Yeah. I'm I'm like not it. not a fan. And which is so too bad because Bruce Springsteen's just incredible. So I do. Yeah. I'm, I like Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's hit those prop bets. Let's see how we did. I got all the ones pulled up here for you, Alex. How, <laughs> first of all, did you did you break even? Hell no! It was nothing to pull up, Mike. It was a mess from the start to the beginning to the finish. Uh, it began with Eric Church sticking with his sunglasses, his patented yep. look, and it all went downhill from there. The, 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 yep. the national anthem went over. Yep. The M and M's commercial aired immediately. I mean, what else yep. went wrong? I can't even remember the uh, heads. Uh, right. I don't actually think Jim Dance mentioned frontline workers at all. During the broadcast, no. and you're right; it got mentioned before the game, but the the bet was yeah. after kickoff. So um, I don't. Did they mention the Patriots? Maybe Once not until the end of the game, did. because it was um, on the Brady to Gronkowski uh, first touchdown. Oh yeah, yeah. Said, that's a Patriots playbook right there. Yeah, that was the only time we heard it. Didn't hear it again. Uh, blinding lights was last, so you lost that one. Can't feel my face. That was sung, so you got that one. Yep. Um, had, to and get, I, had to get freaking blinding lights at the end. Yeah. Like, should listen to you there. And I, and I didn't see what color Gatorade it was because they cut to him late, but he looked pretty, pretty translucent. It looked like it was not a colored yeah, Gatorade. It was like blue or purple that went <laughs> off translucent like that. I think it was blue and it was a big underdog winner, like plus 700, seven to mm. one underdog winners. So shockingly horrible performance on my prop bets that I post on Instagram. But nonetheless, you know, win or lose, like you just, you throw yourself in on those, those random action bets and it makes for a Sunday evening. I hope but everyone enjoyed the evening out there. You did win. A DiGiorno pizza, right? I did. I'm hounding my friends at DiGiorno. And if they're listening right now, before we get to our hashtag always in with food, I'm coming for you guys. So I better see something in my notice, my notifications real soon. All right, DiGiorno, you're on the clock. Just know that. All right, let's let's hashtag always in with food. Let's do it. All right. Yeah, let's brought to you by Saucy, promo code Course of Life to get five bucks off your first delivery of beer, wine, liquor, snacks. They're in 13 major cities and growing. Promo code Course of Life for five bucks off the Saucy app, S-A-U-C-E-Y in the Apple Store. Uh, Mike, this is that annual reminder, and I feel like I poke you on this every year on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know it is Valentine's Day this week, yeah. right? You yep. made all your plans. You're completely done. Oh, oh yeah. All, all the plans are made. Yeah. Yeah. You've already sure. gone to the grocery store and bought a meal. You're going to uh, cook your wife. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, okay. well, yeah. If, fella, if fellas out there, it's at least Tuesday night or Wednesday at earliest. If you're listening to this, you've got like maybe a couple days on Amazon Prime, maybe some flowers. If you rush deliver to get shipped by uh, Saturday. Well, I, first of all, first, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you want to ship flowers? 
Support I mean, your local small business, Alex. Get them uh, local, get them fresh. Yeah, you can Come just on, man. Up as well, too. I'm just so ingrained with the name your flowers website and promo code this from some radio show I listen to. I've been sticking those promo codes in for, for years now. So. so what you're saying is you love your wife, but you don't want to spend a lot of money on your wife. I, 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 I choose uh, to spend my money as wisely as possible and also give the most heartfelt gifts I can to my wife. Nice, nice try. Nice try. A decent save, indeed. Uh, I would say on the bunker scale, it's probably about 15 feet still left for par there. Not, not a bad mm. save. But I still got some yeah, work. You got it, but you're still in the rough. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll get lucky uh, this weekend. You know, hey, there we go. Uh, hey. I'll be, I'll be by the veal, um, Valentine's Day meal for me. It's probably going to be something seafood or pasta related. That's my wife's usual go-to for something home cooked that I can do to please her. So I'll be doing that in addition yep. to this as well to to be determined. Yep. What, what about you? Uh, probably going to do steak. Probably. Um, true. Yeah. Always, always good. I, I think that of all the things I make, that is what my wife most enjoys me cooking. So, you know what? That's tried and true. Nice and simple. Been there mm-hmm. done it before. Do it again. Crush that meal for the wife. And we wish everyone and their significant others out there a happy Valentine's Day as well. Speaking of all that food, we've got a great food guest coming up next week. Mike Ali Khan. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Reality. We got Back spring in, the house. in a week and a half. So get excited for that. And a whole lot more coming on next week's Force of Life. Everyone have a good week. Mm-hmm.